In this video, we are going to see how to use a related table function in Power BI Desktop. So let's understand the scenario. I have two tables. One table shows me a list of Facebook posts. I have added a column called first word, which basically looks at the entire message and extracts the first word from it. That's a very simple formula, similar to what we would use in Excel. I am finding out where the first space appears and taking characters to the left of the space. I have another table called post category, which is going to look at these words, read, learn, see, watch, join, and it's going to classify the message as a post type. Now, having done that, I have created a relationship so that the first word is related to the category word. This relationship is important. Now both the tables understand each other. Now I want to know how many total articles, how many total training programs and related messages were posted. Now look at this column. I tried to create a formula which just counts the post messages. Now remember this formula is being added in the post category table because for each category we have only one row and I just want one number per category. That's why it makes sense to put the column here. It's like adding a column in Excel and copying this formula. The formula seems to be working but it is giving me the same result for all categories. So obviously the result is wrong. Why is the result wrong? Because when I say count post messages, I have not said which rows to count and that is why it is going through the entire table and counting all the rows. That is why it is giving me the same result. This is basically the total number of posts in the post table. What I really want is I want each row to be traversed one at a time. For each row from here, I want this guy to pick up the first word which is read then go to the post table and I wanted to identify those records in the post table where the first word is read and take the count and put it in this column. Now to understand how to do this we have to use a special command called related table. So basically what it is saying is I am currently on this row use the relationship and then return me a table which contains only those posts which have this as the first word and then the count rows function counts it. This is how the related table command works. We don't have an equivalent of this command in Excel so people find it difficult to understand how this is working behind the scenes and that is why I created an animation in PowerPoint. So I'll show you the final animation first and then we'll discuss how this was done. To start with, I have two tables, the category table and the post table. Let's go to the first row. What happens? It goes through the post table and only filters rows which have the word read in them. Then counts it and gives you the count. Next, it is going to go to the second row, do the same thing. Now it found two records with the word learn in it, so it returns the count and it works the same way for rest of the records. Now this makes it much easier for anybody to understand the concept behind a related table. How was this done? So let's start simple. This is just a title. This is just the formula, just color coded for simplicity. This is a screenshot of both the tables. That's it. Now in order to make this easier to understand, I don't want to show all the records in this table. I want a record pointer for this table and depending on where this record pointer is moving, I only want to make the relevant rows in this table visible. To do that, I'll have to first hide the table. So what have I done? I have added 12 bars like this, which are overlapping this particular table in a nice way. Another important thing, I have a table, actually it's an empty table called count, different color for increased visibility. 
then I know the count. So I have four separate text boxes which are going to show the count eventually for each row. So essentially what is going to happen is initially this bar or box or the row pointer will not be visible. I'll just make it visible using an entrance effect. And once it is visible, I want to hide the equivalent row where the word read is present. And then I want to show the count. Also look at the selection pane. Enable. Selection pane can be enabled by going to home, select, selection pane. Slides with complex animation definitely require the selection pane to be on because that makes your life much easier. Notice that I have given proper sensible logical names to these. Rectangles from here to here, I have not bothered to give names because the name rectangle is good enough. Now this helps me in precisely managing the animation because these names are used in the animation pane. So now let's look at the animation. I am enabling the animation pane. Don't get confused. There are only four clicks required because there are four rows. And although this looks like a long sequence, it is a repetitive sequence. The first item to be animated is the current row box that is using a fade animation. As soon as this box is shown, I also want to show the I also want to show the relevant rows from the related table and that is done by applying fade effect which is exit animation. That means the rectangle is just going to dissolve exposing the row behind it. And at the same time, I know the count is 1, so this guy comes in using a peak effect peak effect from the right side so it appears to come from the post table. So let's see these three things in action. It happened too fast for you so I'm just going to increase the duration of each of them. So now let's try the same thing again. Play selected. Look at it carefully. This guy came. As soon as it came the relevant row was shown and the count came in. Now what happens in the second column? Second column, we need to move this box to the second row and that is done using a simple line animation in the downward direction. At the same time, this rectangle at 21, which was showing the earlier row, we need to hide that row again. So the same rectangle comes in using a fade effect, basically blocking the visibility of that row. Now the second row has learn as the first word and I know which are the ones which have the word learn in them in the post table. There happen to be two of them and that's why I'm making them disappear using a fade effect. And of course we are getting the count in. So now the same pattern is repeated four times. And now I can actually show you from beginning to end and you can see the impact. So what did we learn in the process? We understood the related table concept in Power BI or DAX. And simultaneously, we also learned nuances of PowerPoint animation. If you like this video, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also check out my blog called efficiency365.com. Thank you.